Hey everybody out there on social media, my name is Matthew Johnson and welcome to Steps to Freedom. We are still currently in our series on how to go through the 12 steps and today we're going to be looking at and breaking down step four, the conduct part or better known as the sex conduct. So if you have not seen my prior videos that have to do with step four and the resentment part or the fear parts, I urge you, please go and watch those first, get caught up, and while you're doing that, make sure you get yourself a basic text of Alcoholics Anonymous, as well as some highlighters, pens, notebook paper. You're gonna wanna write down everything that's on this whiteboard here behind me, as well as take notes on some of the things I'm gonna be saying. Also, if I can ask you viewers for a huge favor, if you could please like, subscribe, and share this video with as many family, friends, people in recovery or not in recovery, that would be greatly appreciated. My whole mission, my whole goal is to further the message of recovery in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, I am a Christian and I don't apologize for God or shy away from talking about Jesus or Christianity here on this channel, but I do want to be respectful and meet everybody where they're at. I wasn't always a Christian. I was an atheist and an agnostic at one point. So I know what it's like to have resentments towards Jesus or Christianity. Also, I want to throw out that I'm not representing Alcoholics Anonymous in any way, shape, or form or any 12-step fellowship. I am not a pastor or claiming to be some uh, pastor or spiritual guru. I'm just a simple man that's in recovery, that's trying to be of maximum service to my God and to the people around me. So without further ado, if you want to open up to page 59, that is where the 12 steps are located. And we're just going to go over step four, kind of break it down real quick, even though we've been discussing uh, that step and, and doing the same opening for the last two weeks. This is the final uh, part of it, the, the conduct part. So after today, it will be complete. And then next week, we'll be moving on to step five. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I'm a recovered drug addict and alcoholic. I always want to introduce myself so people know that I've recovered from a hopeless state of mind and body, and I give all glory to my higher power, Jesus Christ, uh, for removing that mental obsession. So on page 59, uh, it says, if you locate where step four is, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So for the last two weeks, we've been doing that. And this is the, the final part, which is the conduct part, or known as the sex conduct, because it has to do with our relationships and how we treat uh, our, our spouse or our friends, uh, but mainly our, our loved one, the one that we're more intimate with. So make sure that we're doing the inventory on ourselves and that we're being honest and thorough about it, that we're not taking any shortcuts and we're really going to look at ourselves the way that we truly are instead of through a broken lens. So with that being said, I also want to throw out that the principle attached to step four is courage. And we'll probably discuss that a little bit more, but we've been discussing that and it takes plenty of courage to go through step four. So we we'll probably won't really uh, talk about it too much. So without further ado, if you want to open up to page 69, that is where the beginning of our study takes place. And I just want to throw this out there. I think it's pretty ironic that the sex conduct is on page 69. That is all I'm going to say. Uh, if you know what I mean, then, then <laughs> I just thought that was pretty funny uh, to point that out to some of the viewers. So uh, on the bottom paragraph of 68 is where it's actually going to start. And then it carries over until page 70, 71. But really it wraps up onto 70. All right. So uh, when we start off, it says, now about sex. Many of us needed an overhauling there, but above all, we try to be sensible on this question. It's so easy to get way off the track. Here we find human opinions running to extremes, absurd extremes. Perhaps one set of voices cry that sex is a, lower, a lust of lower nature, a base necessity of procreation. Then we have the voices who cry for sex and more sex, who bewail the institution of marriage, 
who think that most of the troubles of the race are traceable to sex causes. We think that we do not have enough of it or that it isn't the right kind. They see its significance everywhere. One school will allow a man no flavor for his fare and the other would have us all on the straight pepper diet. We want to stay out of this controversy. We do not want to be the arbiter of anyone's sex conduct for we, ha we all have sex problems. We'd hardly be human if we didn't. What can we do about them? So I'm gonna stop there and, and break it down a little bit. So every person wants to try to tell one person um, how their sex life should be or what, what, what's normal in the sex um, you know, realm, I, I should say. And so this is totally up to you um, what you think is normal. If you look at it as from a biblical standpoint, the word of God will tell you what's acceptable and what's not. He'll say homosexuality is not acceptable, um, you know, sodomy, things of that nature. Anything outside of marriage is not acceptable, but that is for the Christians. And if you're a Christian, I urge you to, to refrain from those things. But if you're not a Christian, it, it's up to you to find out what um, it is normal. As long as you're not harming anybody, uh, that is the main thing. I mean, I urge, hopefully you don't harm yourself as well, but it's up to you to explore and find out um, what's acceptable and what's not. And obviously talk to your sponsor and your network around you. And, and things will change as the longer you stay sober and really work on yourself and live by spiritual principles, you, you know, God will lead you in the right direction. He has ingrained us with certain values and morals because we're created in the image of God. Uh, but the more we live in sin, obviously, um, we get separated from him. And then we think uh, what is evil is actually good and what's good is actually evil. So be cautious and aware of all those things. Also, uh, where it says we want to stay out of the the controversy, we do not want to be the arbiter of anyone's sex conduct. I just want to throw this out there uh, that in these 12-step fellowships, you always hear uh, people trying to tell you stay out of relationships or you have to have a year before you can date and have sex. I just want to make it loud and clear. It says here in this literature, we do not want to be the arbiter of anyone's sex conduct. We want to stay out of that controversy. Now, um, is it a good idea? To stay out of a relationship for a year or longer until you uh, have a good foundation and are spiritually fit? Yes, I recommend that. I'm still staying out of relationships um, and I've been sober over a year, way over a year. So uh, I just want to make it loud and clear. This is your affair because what is correct and what's not correct. You're going to have so many people telling you things. Oh, you should stay out of a relationship for uh, five years or you shouldn't date this type of person or Christians only or whatever. You're going to have so many opinions and the choice comes down to you. And uh, a good sponsor will ask, hey, do you want to hear my opinion? But never force it on you. And a good uh, sponsee or someone in recovery that is really open-minded and honest is going to listen to their sponsor and take those suggestions. Remember, suggestions are subtle commands, but there are some really good suggestions that um, will save your life and keep you sober. And one of them is stay out of a relationship until you're spiritually fit. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, stay out necessarily for a year. I had a friend who got into a relationship after six months, but he was spiritually fit then. And now he's been married for a couple years and he's been dating the same girl for, I think, over five years. And he's still sober and he's going on uh, like eight years now or so, seven years. So that shows you that it's not entirely, too, entirely true that we, these are just guidelines, that no one has the answer, that everybody's case is different. But talk about it with your sponsor or if you're not in recovery uh, and you're just improving your spirituality uh, and you're a Christian, I would suggest that they, they meet your ideal mate list, which we're going to be discussing here in a minute behind me. That's written on this board. So uh, with that being said... We're going to get into where it actually shows how to write out the conduct or known as the sex conduct. So in the middle of page 69, it says, we reviewed our own conduct over the years past. Where have we been selfish, dishonest, or inconsiderate? 
whom we had hurt, did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Were we at, where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? We got this down, all down on paper and looked at it. So there it is. Everything that I just said in here is going to be right here. And we'll review it again just to show you that everything I'm saying better line up with this book. We want to do exactly what the book says. This is the solution, not me. I follow this to get the solution and then people can look at me on how I'm living my life and take my suggestions because of this. Same thing with the word of God. It's not me that, that is perfect or anything. I follow what people did before me and I stayed sober. So everything I'm sharing with you is not necessarily all out of my experience or opinion, even though that the majority is, uh, it's, it's through this. This is where it's at. So where have we been? Selfish, dishonest, inconsiderate. Okay. Now remember, this has to do with your sex life and your relationships on how you treat your sex partner or partners. Okay. So just like with the resentment part, you want to get a blank sheet of paper first before you even do this. And you want to write down all your sex partners. Okay. All your serious relationships. And I know some of you uh, guys or girls out there, uh, men or women, I should say, uh, might be like, well, how am I going to remember every single person? Well, it's just to the best of your ability. So what I do, I find a room, just like with the resentment uh, part, uh, a room or somewhere outside secluded just by yourself. Maybe do, you know, do some prayers and worship uh, before that if you're a Christian um, or something spiritual, maybe burn incense, whatever it is, whatever is your ritual or routine and ask God for you uh, to be able to see the truth on how you actually treat your, your partners and, uh, and, and who needs to be on this list or should be on this list. And just write down all the names that come to your mind to the best ability. You don't need to try to go on Facebook and be like every single person. Or if you only have one name, I've had people only had one name, then you're going to put that down. Um, you know, it, this is just a guideline to help you see truth on your behavior. This is to show behavior, not to show how many people you slept with or, or anything thinking some people might think that's uh, a good trademark or something like, look at me, how many notches on my belt. That's, that's not what we're doing here. It's to get down to the truth on who you really are and how to hopefully correct that behavior. So. You have your blank sheet of paper, you have all your names down. Then once you have all your names down, you're going to recreate this exactly the way it's, it is. Now, I, if you have to get bigger paper or multiple papers to write this down, just know that every name, one name gets one sheet of paper. So if you have say 15 people, 15 names, you should have 15 sheets of paper that look just like this. Hopefully you'll make it so it's bigger. Uh, I mean, uh, more space here and smaller. I just did it all bigger because I'm limited on how to show you guys this and I have to use this whiteboard. And so I want to make sure you guys can read it, but write all this stuff smaller and your answers, uh, bigger. So you want to fit in as much stuff as possible. So again, I'm going to give a demonstration where have I been selfish with say, uh, one of the mothers of my, my child. Okay. Uh, where I've been selfish, well, I used her for sex. I lusted after her, sexual lust. Um, I didn't care really about uh, her necessarily. I looked at her as an object. She was more of an object to me uh, than a, a person or a significant other. Even though I uh, loved her later on in the beginning, it had straight to do with lust. And that's why it's important to really know who you are and your spirituality to, to evolve it healthy, uh, you know, evolve it. Um, so, you know, it's not just lust. You want to make sure you love the person. Um, at least if you're looking for a serious relationship. All right. Where was I dishonest? Okay. Well, I manipulated her into having sex with me. If she wanted to do it or not, still, I, my whole, uh, motives behind it was, Oh, I want to sleep with this girl. Um, I maybe in, in that manipulation lied. Um, I also, you know, stole money from her and things like that. Um, 
you know, used her. I used her, and that was dishonest. Inconsiderate. Well, I was inconsiderate of her body. I really didn't respect her, even though I told myself, and I tried to make it seem like it, I really didn't. I used her, like I said uh, in the beginning, in the selfish part, that uh, like an object. I was inconsiderate of her time and of her finances, and just inconsiderate of her uh, as a person, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. And so a lot of this is going to be, maybe you have the same person that's on the resentment, uh, you know, and all that stuff can be on there as well, but just make sure you see um, how this is affecting your sex life as well as just your, your personal um, life. Um, so then it goes on to where uh, did I arouse jealousy, suspicion, and bitterness? Well, um, you know, I always wanted attention and everything like that. So where did I arouse jealousy? Well, maybe I, I would say things uh, to her like, uh, or purposely look at another girl or say, hey, I was talking to this girl from work today. Or I would say and do things purposely involve other women like other women wanted me so I could get a, uh, a reaction from her. Good or bad, I wanted a reaction. I wanted that love and that attention that uh, she might not have been giving me or to want me in a, in a real sick, twisted way and really unhealthy way way but i wanted her to want me um when i wanted her to want me so i would say and do things to rouse jealousy um purposely look at another woman while she walks by uh you know um yeah things of that nature suspicion where did i rouse suspicion maybe i want to answer my phone because i was out getting drugs or i wanted to make her jealous Maybe I uh, put a password on my phone and would not let her look at my phone or have certain messages from certain girls. Even if I was not doing anything with them, uh, I still would not want her to look at it or I would purposely or didn't care uh, about her feelings if I was you know, interacting with other women. It was causing, causing problems. And that is not right. If you're in a serious relationship, you need to respect your partner. And if they don't want you looking at uh, certain things or being involved with certain people, you need to respect that. But same goes on the opposite side, that they can't be so spiritually sick and unfit and codependent or have major mental uh, health issues that they're you know, doing the same thing to you. So it's a balancing act. You becoming spiritually fit uh, will attract your your mate i believe to be as spiritually fit as you that's why it's so important to get spiritually fit before picking uh, a person to to settle down with or have a relationship with that's why that stay out of a relationship for a year is there to give you a good um idea or foundation of who you really are and what you really want and you can see the truth when someone's really unspiritually um, fit or sick when it comes to, to things like this. So then we get into bitterness. Well, what caused bitterness? Well, if we looked at everything that we have uh, talked about or have written down, that is gonna cause bitterness by itself. So there's your answers right there. But also I caused bitterness. I caused a, I caused a lot of resentment, hate. Uh, she hates me. I caused her to be very fearful of me um, because of my uh, abusive, uh, tendencies mentally verbally physically all of it um, you know and, and so everything's gonna cause bitterness and beyond so so write down as much stuff as you can uh, as possible that that's the best and then it goes on to say was it selfish or not so uh, before we we go on to the rest of this board I'll show you where it comes out of it says in this way we tried to shape a sane and sound ideal for our future sex life. We subjected each relation to this test. Was it selfish or not? So you can see, was it selfish or not? If you put no, you're probably a narcissist or some kind of psychopath because what I just said was definitely selfish. And if you can't see that, then you need to start all over from <laughs> scratch or I don't know what to tell you. But uh, it's all gonna be selfish, just uh, Spoiler alert, it's all selfish. Um, we ask God to mold, mold our ideals and help us to live up to them. 
So that is called the ideal mate list. And that's where you see this right here. It says ideal mate list, and then it has a whole bunch of numbers. That is meaning uh, you don't have to have just eight, uh, you know, eight principles or characteristics that you want in your mate. Um, you can put as many as you want, and I suggest the more you put down, the better. I just only had room to write eight, uh, but you're just going to write a whole bunch of characteristics that you want in your mate, um, and we can go more into that, but really really easy it's like honesty love adventurous maybe a good uh you know um, sexual side uh you know but you're not just going to want to write things like oh good looks and you know things that really um it, it's more the characteristics that you want that are inside um, internally instead of externally but they could still be you know like adventurous and outgoing and and uh, selfless and loving and a Christian, things like that, um, that you're gonna wanna write down for, for that. And also just to throw this out, just in case if I forget to talk about the ideal mate list, which we pretty much already went over it, it's uh, qualities that you have to live up to as well. So it's not just, oh, I want you know my mate to have these things like honesty and, and so forth. You have to live up to them as well. And while you do that, it kinda, evens out the playing field and kind of like the law of attraction, even though I'm not trying to promote that, uh, even though it does say on the Bible, whatever you reap, you sow. So it's kind of the same thing, but whatever you put out, you get back, you know? So if you want a, you know, you, and I am perfect ideal mate list, even though there's no such thing as perfect, but to your standards um, and to God's standards, that's the most important thing. All right. So then uh, it says, we remember always that our sex powers were God-given and therefore good, neither to be used lightly or selfishly, nor to be despised and loathed. Whatever ideal turns out to be, our ideal mate list, we must be willing to make amends where we have done harm, provided that we do not bring about still more harm in doing. In other words, we treat sex as we would any other problem. In meditation, we ask God what we should do about each specific matter. The right answer will come if we want it. God alone can judge our sex situation. So remember, we don't want to be the arbiter. This is between you know you and God. I would involve your you know your sponsor and, and your network in to, to helping you with this, but. Um, just remember, you know, as long as you're willing to work towards the stuff, you don't have to be perfect, but just know that your behavior is uh, what this is all about. It's, it's are you using, uh, you know, the opposite sex for your sexual lust desires and are you really trying to change and, and not use every single person like an object? And so just to sum this all up, say if you had, you know, a whole bunch of names and everything, look at how you probably treated every single partner that you've had exactly the same, whether it be a wife or husband of 20 years or a one night stand, you probably treat them the same way. Who knows? You might even treated the one night stand way better than you did your husband or wife for 20 years. And these are the behaviors we get to watch out for. We're not going to be perfect. But we really need to be working on this thing, and, and it's a lifetime process. You're not going to get it overnight. It, it takes a while to increase your spirituality, to, to get your mind uh, back in sync and make new pathways. Remember, mind, body, spirit. But we really got to be working on it, and that's why it's a good idea to refrain from, from having sex, you know, one-night stands or serious relationships until you find out who you are um, and that's why you see so many relapses is people just jump right in because the drugs and alcohol were taken away and sex is the next best thing, um, you know, and, and be careful of things like pornography as well. Um, that can become very addicting and that can replace the drugs and alcohol and even the, the women or men that there are a lot of addicts and alcoholics become or are sex addicts, especially when they get sober and Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes uh, they don't get that balance for the first couple years or even longer. Um, you know, so be careful you're not using, you know, things like pornography or masturbation as a drug. 
because that can uh, affect you spiritually as well as your sex life in the future. All right, then it, it says uh, counsel. We're going to page 70. With persons is often desirable, your network, sponsor, but we let God be the final judge. We realize that some people are as fanatical about sex as others are loose. We avoid hysterical thinking or a vice. Suppose we fall short of our chosen ideal and stumble. Does this mean we're going to get drunk or high? Some people tell us so, but this is only a half truth. It depends on us and our motives. If we are sorry for what we have done and have the honest desire to let God take us to better things, we believe that we will be forgiven and will have learned our lesson. If we are not sorry and our conduct continues to harm others, we are quite sure to drink or use drugs again. These are not theory, these are not theorizing, these are facts out of our experience. To sum up about sex, we earnestly pray for the right ideal, for guidance in each questionable situation, for sanity and for the strength to do the right thing. If sex is very troublesome, we throw ourselves the harder into helping others. We think of their needs and work for them. This takes out of us our this takes out of ourselves. It quiets the imperious urge when to yield means would mean heartache. If we have been thorough about our personal in inventory and have written down a lot, we have listed and analyzed our resentments, we have begun to comprehend their fertility and fatality. We have commenced to see their terrible destructiveness. We have begin or begun to learn tolerance, patience, and goodwill towards all men, even our enemies, for we look on them as sick people. Remember this the sick man prayer or the resentment prayer in the prior resentment video. We have listed the people we have hurt by our own conduct and are willing to straighten out the past if we can. In this book, you read again and again that faith did for us what we could not do for ourselves. We hope you are convinced now that God can remove whatever self-will has blocked you off from him. If you have already made a decision and an inventory of your grosser handicaps, you have made a good beginning that being so you have swallowed and digested some big chunks of truth about yourself. So just remember, if you are struggling with uh, pornography or fornication, you know, having sex, whatever the case may be for you, it says throw yourself the harder into helping others. You know, get more commitments, become more of service. That does help, um, you know, but like I said, all this is a process. And, you know, just, just try to be of maximum service to God, to yourself, and refrain from harming people. It does say if we're harming people and don't have an honest desire to change or, or uh, to do well that we're going to drink again. This is not a theory. These are facts. So be cautious about that. Make sure you're not just manipulating men and women to hook up. Uh, make sure you're really not using people uh, for money or any type of manipulating behavior. Also, with the sex conduct, you can do this also with just friendships. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, just with sex, even though that this is what we want to do first. Let's do the sex conduct first, but play around with it. Uh, throw some friends in there, some really best friends, lifelong friends, and see your real true behavior. Are you manipulating them? Use them for money? Do you, or do you really care about them in general, or is it just what I can get? Um, and the more we, we take inventory on ourselves and really look at the stuff and share it with our sponsors so we can get their perception and point of view about us, because remember, the stuff we're writing down is just our perception. Some of it is true, some of it's not. And we need someone else that really truly knows us and knows our, our story and our past. Uh, and that's why it's so important to get intimate with a real sponsor and let them know about everything and be honest so they can really help us 100%. Um, and tell us the way we really are and be like, oh, you should work on that, you should work on this, adjust this, you know, and get through it. And that's why I always say in all my videos, well, not all, but the majority of all my videos, it's important to have a program, whether if you're a Christian or not a Christian, develop some kind of program, some kind of network with people that are really true, uh, your best friends, really truly your best friends and love you and care for you and do this type of stuff with them. 
Form your own meetings. Go to your church. Form your own Bible studies and, and play around this stuff. But I, I think you should get a network of people and do all this type of 12 steps and, and see how your spirituality improves and your relationship with your higher power and so forth. So just remember, you can also do this if it doesn't have to do anything with sex. You can just be your friendships and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, um, you know, and the last thing on 71, it says, you know, God can remove whatever self-will has blocked you off from him. So remember, that's what blocks us off from God is the character defects, the shortcomings, um, the self. Remember, the ism from alcoholism is the I, the self and the me. Um, all that fear, all that stuff is blocking us and, and you know, decaying us on the, the inside. And so the more we go through this work and get it all out and not let it build up again, that's why we have the 10th step, then we, we're allowed to have that good connection, all the, the bars uh, for the spiritual Wi-Fi, if you see my other videos I talk about, so we can have full connection uh, with our higher power. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. I don't think I've left anything out. Um, and just remember up here too, where it says, what should I have done instead? Um, that, you know, put that stuff down as well. I kind of forgot and didn't go over that. I left it out. I got distracted by the ideal mate list, but, uh, put, put down, what should I have done instead? Well, I shouldn't have used, uh, the mother of my child, like, and like an object. I should have been honest. I should have been loving and kind. And that's where the ideal mate list comes out of. It's really the same thing, but I like to separate it and do this on a separate piece of paper and write down as much stuff because it's kind of harder to see if you just have, have this. But yeah, write that stuff down, do your ideal mate list, and uh, you know go from there. So this video doesn't need to be extended any longer. We got it down to 32 minutes, which is awesome. So if you want to get a hold of me, you can reach me and email me at steps number two freedom7 at gmail.com or you can find us on our Facebook page. We also have a private Facebook group page. If you want to send friend requests to that as well, leave comments down below, interact. If there's anything I can do to, to help you get into a local rehab or a long-term uh, rehab, uh, you know, detox facility, whatever it might be, if you're in the Pinellas County area or if you're in another state, email me and I'll, I'll do whatever I can to get you connected. But obviously I have more connects here in Pinellas County, Hillsboro, Sarasota, all these other counties around me. So um, also, if you do not mind, if you can like, subscribe and share this video, that would be greatly appreciated. And hopefully I will see you next week and we'll get into uh, step five. All right, so uh, if no one told you that they loved you today, just know that Jesus does, and so do I. God bless everybody.